Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building a Creality Ender 3. This is a kit from China. Oh. Hang on a minute, I've got the wrong, got the wrong bits. <laughs> oh, I do love my own jokes. Hello everyone, my name is Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're obviously going to be upgrading my Prusa Mark 2S replica, a respectful recreation of the original work. Yes, one of those. So the upgrade we're going to be doing is basically to the Mark 2.5. So basically it achieves most of the features of the Mark 3, but it also sticks with the original control board using 12 volts. So not only that, but this was created like totally DIY. I had no contact with Prusa for doing this machine and bought no parts from Prusa. So that was kind of why it was a bit of a challenge and why it doesn't work particularly perfectly. So let's address some of those issues. The first one is the lack of a magnetic bed. Now, I mean, that's not really any fault on my part. Magnetic beds didn't really exist at the time when I did this or when the Mark IIS was around. Everyone just used PI straight onto the bed. So that'll be upgrade number one. The second thing is the existence of filament sensor. So this is the, uh, the kind of Mark III filament sensor, Mark II and a half. It's not the new magnetic reader one, it's the IR sensor one, which a lot of people seem to have problem with, problems with, but I've had no issues at all really since day one with mine, so I'm going to be sticking one on here. We're going to be uh, changing the springs and PTFE tube, which is part of the extruder upgrade. The thermistor, which I didn't get quite right on my original design, it kind of goes up around the carriage in a bit of a weird way comes off and doesn't work perfectly. We've also got Bontech gears, so we've got much better dual drive system. The extruder gear in that was never quite right. The extrusion ratio wasn't right. The, uh, the gear itself seemed to be not quite concentric, so it made a really kind of wavy pattern all over the print. Didn't look particularly great. So that'll be addressing that. We've got integrated lead screw motors, so they no longer have to deal with this weird little uh, joiner thing. We've got the proper stepper motors for the X and Y and E axes. So we should not have any like really hot motors anymore because we, especially on the stepper motor, that was getting very hot. So hopefully we should address that. Did I already mention this? Pinder probe, so it's a temperature calibrated probe. Well, sort of. So it corrects basically the inductance reading with a temperature table. So that would be great. And then we've got a whole load, oh, hang on knocked you a fan. And then we've got a selection of printed parts. So, I mean, I've just taken some of them out here, but it's in this really nice, lovely blue from uh, Das Filament. I mean, they didn't provide it, I paid for it, but still, it is still Das Filament. And it's this really nice kind of shiny, metallic-y blue. So I think that's gonna look really good when it's all finished. Obviously, not all the parts are Prusa designed. So because of this like custom frame, there are some modified bits like the Prusa, uh, like the power supply mounting, which is what this part is. So some of my own parts, some of the original Prusa parts, and we should be there. Right, without further ado, let's get on with a bit of a build. Just one more thing quickly. The instructions I'm gonna be using are the Mark 2.5S upgrade kit from Mark 2 to 2.5S, but mine's obviously quite a bit different, so bear with me. Might not get it quite right first time, because. This is a totally different machine, sort of, ish, a bit. Anyway, let's get on with it. I wasn't really too sure where to start, so we just started with taking the electronics off the control board uh, and then taking the heat bed out and we'll get that heat bed all replaced as that I know has definitely got to all come out. So having taken the bed off, uh, it turns out this is not going to be quite as simple as I hoped it might be. <laughs> so you'll notice here that the standoffs that I've used have a screw from the top and then a separate screw from the bottom, which means this plate, which mounts everything to the bed, which is a non-standard plate, doesn't need to be threaded in the corners because you just the screw just goes straight through 
and screwed into this little threaded boss piece. However, on this piece, we're using these spaces, which seem to be a different length, which presumably helps gain like an extra one millimeter on the Z height. Uh, and they're also not threaded. So it means there's a requirement to have a thread in this plate in order to screw through this, through that, and then into this. However, I can't do that. So I need to find a slightly different way around this problem. I'm not sure quite how this is going to work or if it's going to work at all. What I'm gonna try doing is just using these threaded standoffs, I think. My only real worry there is that the firmware seems to have this, or have this auto calibration. So if the bed is like a millimeter too high, like however, it's probably two millimeters. If it finds that the bed is two millimeters higher than it's supposed to find it, then it might fail the calibration because it will think, oh, you've done the assembly wrong. So I'm a bit concerned that that's not gonna work. My alternative would be to have uh, used this uh, boss as intended, get some longer countersunk screws. So it goes from here, through here, through the plate, and then with a nut on the bottom. The downside of that is that this part, which holds the belt, is not particularly well suited for using any nuts. It's all just kind of designed to have a screw go through from the bottom. So, hmm, yes, not ideal. We'll need to find a way around that problem. I've just had a quick look around the workshop and I can't find any M3 countersunk screws longer than the ones that you get with it. So at the moment, that is not gonna work. So what we're gonna stick with for now is using these brass studs and we're gonna have to rip the PEI off this side, which is gonna be a bit of a mess, I think. Easy is not the right word. It's not leaving much residue behind, which is good. This is really, really difficult to pull off. <laughs> uh, well, we should be able to quite easily remove this screw now. Just looking, there has some weird like stuff on that screw, but I think it's all right. It's not corrosion, so it's good from that point of view. So I did finally get that sheet off. I mean, it went really well for the first half, none of this is sticky, but here the adhesive just seemed to snap all in one go along this line, it just basically exploded, and the whole sheet just then came off. I mean, which is good in a way, because it was getting really hard to pull, but either way, we've now got access to the screws and taken all the brass nuts off the other side. Brass nuts, these like little studs. I've taken the connectors off of here because we're going to be needing those. The replacement one that I have from Zaribo is not exactly perfect, so we're going to have to do some uh, wire harness stuff to get that sorted. Other than that, this now, no use to me whatsoever. Seems a little bit sad, but anyway, it's now gone. 
So let's move on to building up the new one. Okay, so now we've got a bed and the bed carriage all set ready to go. I've put the brass inserts into this with some thread locker. I mean, you can't do that on the standard one because once you put the PEI on, you can't access the screws, but because this one has magnets, you don't need to really worry about not being able to access the screws on the top. So they're in permanently. Well, they're not, it's not like permanent permanent, but it's fairly permanent. And then, I mean, the belt's not set quite right, but it's in there and it's ready to go. So I think we're just gonna leave that as it is right now, put that to one side. We still got to do the connector on the other end of the thermistor as well. But yeah, we'll put that to one side and carry on with a different section. Looking good. So that's it from me today on the Mark IIS upgrade build. Next time the build is gonna take a little bit of a turn as we really start to pull things away from the frame. For now, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. There'll be a link in the description. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that. And I will see you in the next one.